Yeah, <sighs> right. It's still concrete. So that's where the manifold is and all the controls and everything. So they've left this axis here. Oh, and that is where it's leaking. So I don't know if you can hear it. Probably even see it, but yeah, it's basically try and get this. There. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but that is leaking down there. Guess who's back? That's right. I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. Did you miss me? Some of you might have. Some of you probably thought, good riddance. Hopefully he's gone. But you can't get rid of me that easily. So you've probably noticed that I haven't posted a video for a couple of weeks. And that's simply because I've had a lot of stuff on. Good things. My sister got married in Portugal two weeks ago. And that basically, I took my laptop and everything with me there thinking I might get time to edit the video. And that just didn't happen because the wedding was literally go, go, go. And especially it was our first time going away with both the kids. So that was a big challenge for us, for me and Nikki. But the kids were actually absolutely golden uh, on the trip for the wedding and everything. Everything was beautiful. Such an amazing event. Like my sister and my brother-in-law, they honestly, they pulled that wedding out the bag like it was phenomenal probably the best wedding that i've been to ever and i've been to a, a quite a lot of big fancy weddings but yeah they smashed it they smashed it you probably saw some of the pictures that i posted last week or so and then this past week obviously we had install the show so i met a few of you guys there and appreciate you guys who came up to me and asking when the next video is coming out and if everything was right because I hadn't posted up a video. It's nice to see that people are genuinely concerned, but I'm fine, I'm alive, I'm well. Everything is going great. So I've just had a couple of weeks off because I just haven't had the time to sit down and edit a video. But I went to get one out today. Uh, excuse me and my attire. It's 20 something degrees outside still. So yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm making the most of vest season, so yeah. Oh, do you know what? It's It feels so weird not having done a YouTube video. I know it's only been two weeks, but even before when Jessica was born, I took a break, but it was like a week. And I think I still, instead of doing two videos a week, I just did one a week. But this is the first time I think since I've been really rolling with the videos that I've actually taken two weeks off, no videos, no editing, anything like that. And like, I'm still, this is like the last few bits I'm just finishing off. And it took me a while to get back into the swing of it again. It's weird. Like once you start doing it, you get into a groove. And then when you don't do it, it's like, well, I haven't really been working either for the last two weeks. So that was hard when I got back into work. I had my first proper job yesterday, which was a service, which turned into a bloody overhaul of a repair because the boiler's never been serviced. But I didn't even record that one because I was just, I thought it was just going to be a standard service. So I didn't even take my camera with me. So yeah, you, you're not going to see that one. But anyway, these videos are still from the end of April. So if I'm making certain references to the weather or if you see me wearing a jumper and a woolly hat or whatever, you know what it's like. We're literally just getting a bit of heat now and it's coming up to the end of June. So you remember what it was like in April. It was still cold. It still felt wintry. So that's why. I am wearing what I'm wearing in those videos and why I'm wearing what I'm wearing now. But look, I don't want to hold this on too long. I just thought I'd do a slightly longer intro because I haven't been on for a while. And I just wanted to say, hi, everyone. Thanks for being patient and thanks for still keeping up with the channel. And to everyone who's new, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Please don't forget to like the videos because it all helps the algorithm. It all helps push my content out there. I know it's summer and things start to uh, slow down a little bit, but I'm still going to try and keep up with the YouTube videos. I'm still going to be doing two a week. I've got a backlog of videos to get out, so I'm still going to be doing that. And I've got, hopefully, I'm working on some stuff. I might have some news to share in the coming weeks, so keep your eyes peeled for that. 
and I'm going to try and get this 10k giveaway. I'm almost at 11k now, but I still need to do the 10k giveaway. I will try my best to try and get that sorted in July. That's my goal. Stay tuned. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll give you more information about the giveaway, etc. But in the meantime, like I said, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed today's videos and I will see you all very soon. Enjoy the weekend. Take care. Okay, welcome to today's job. So it's a power flush. I know, I know, I know. Everyone's bored of power flushing, but this is slightly different. So you might enjoy it. You might not. I'll leave it up to you whether you want to carry on watching or not. But I'm flushing an underfloor heating manifold today. Well, underfloor heating system. Downstairs is all underfloor heating. Upstairs is all radiators. But I'm not going to be doing the radiators. I've just been asked to come in and flush the underfloor heating system. Now you can see the. Uh, oh, let me get some light on here so you can actually see. So you can see the condition of the flow meters. They are in pretty bad condition. So they are. There's a lot of brown, especially that one. That one looks pretty badly clogged up. So the job I've got to do today is I've got to um, flush each loop individually. I'm going to be replacing the flow meters here. So I've got seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flow meters to replace. I've got to replace this wiring center. So this is what a W a hydronic master. I've never come across this, but customers asked me to replace this with a heat miser, which they've supplied. I've got to replace that pump as well so we'll get that replaced and obviously new stats as well with the heat miser center so, um what was i going to say i'm losing my train of thought here flushing wise i'm obviously going to isolate the manifold from there and then luckily i've got these three quarter inch tap connectors so they will go straight onto there to the top and bottom and then my power flush will go straight onto there with 22 mil feeds so it means that at least we can get a nice Good flow going through this. I'm going to be using AD's MC40 to flush this system, so that's a cleaner and descaler. And then I'm going to be adding the bio side into the system as well, so that's going to obviously prevent the bacterial growth because underfloor heating typically works on a lower temperature, so there's more chance of bacterial growth in there. So that's the additive I'm going to be adding afterwards once the system's been flushed. So currently I'm just waiting for that to heat up. The cold main is pretty cold, so it's gonna take a little while for that to get hot. So in the meantime, there's a shelf here, so we've removed that. And I'm probably gonna make a start on the wiring center, I reckon, whilst I'm waiting for everything to get hot. And even whilst it's circulating the whole system, I'll crack on with the wiring. And then once the wiring's done, I can then start isolating the loops individually and then so on and so forth. And once the system's been flushed, I'll then replace all of the flow meters one by one afterwards. So that's today's job. Let's see how it goes. So I'm taking a little bit of time here. That's been hot and ready for a while, but I haven't yet got started. The reason being is because I wanted to identify what each zone was. So I've been going around turning all the thermostats on and off and then just identifying which actuator is for each zone because I'm going to be changing this wiring center and all these thermostats to the heat miser ones. Obviously I need to know what's gonna to correspond to what. So I've just taken a little bit of time to get that sorted. So I've identified that. The wiring on this one is different to what I'm usually used to, but I think I've got it sussed. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna basically take all the actuators off, I'm gonna get the power flush machine connected and get that running whilst I sort out the wiring here. And then once I've done that, then I can start isolating each loop individually and then go from there so it's going to be a bit of a mishmash of jobs but we'll get it done update so put the new wiring center here got rid of it from there so it's just a little bit easier with all the actuators here the only cable i've got to bring across is the pump cable and the main power cable as well which is that gray one that two core there so that's going to be irrelevant now because that was all the stats here are sort of they're wired but they're wireless because there was only that one cable coming to the old receiver which i'm assuming there's going to be another wiring center or receiver where the other wiring center is because out of the back of these there's four there's two cables with two cores so there's four cores going to each one so i'm assuming 
they go back to some sort of central control center and then out of there you've got two cores which come to the old wiring center and that then told it whenever there was a demand obviously with the heat miser one we don't need that because everything is going to be fully wireless with the new neo air stats or whatever it is so what i've done so far is i've just wired each of the actuators in i've had to extend a couple of them which is fine so they're all wired in and now i'm going to bring the mains in the pump cable and then this is where we wire our boiler control in so this is where i just need to double check yes i'm going to have to bring it live from there into the common so not on that on the heat cool enable which is going to be our boiler and normally open that's going to be our switch live back to the boiler to tell it when to fire up and also just having a read of these instructions so all of these dip switches above here they've all been set to number three so that's all done i had the whole system circulating for whilst i was wiring all this in now that i finished wiring this in i'm now closing all of them so we've just got the first loop open at the moment so we're going to flush each loop now for five minutes at a time and then i believe i've then got to add the neutralizer in because i'm using where's it gone um mc40 plus so it's a quite a corrosive descaler and it comes with neutralizing crystals as well so i just need to double check the instructions whether i need to it doesn't make sense if i neutralize as a goal i'm guessing i've got to flush each loop individually and then from the last one, add the neutralizer in and then work my way backwards because where you got the water's pink at the moment or red, that's meant to go yellow once it's been neutralized. So I'm not sure if I've got to dump it out first, fill it and then add the neutralizer or add the neutralizer and then dump it all out and then refill it. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. So yeah, a um, bit of a long, long winded process, but we're getting there. So now, whilst it's doing each loop, I'm going to start wiring in all these bits. Got to change that pump as well. So yeah, lots to do still. Okay, so wiring centre side, everything's wired in. All the actuators are all wired in. Got the mains wired in there. Got the pump wired into there. And I've also taken from here, obviously I'm going to tidy all that up, but I've taken a three-way way go for my permanent live and brought that over with this black wire here. So that's our common on there. And then normally open is our gray, which is then going back to the switch live cable uh, from the existing wiring center. So now that's all done, I can close up the wiring center. We are now flushing each loop individually. I'm on that loop at the moment, we've got these two left. And then once that's done, I can add the neutralizer and then let it neutralize and then start dumping it out afterwards. So the flush is done and have a look at that. That is a hell of a lot more than I expected to pick up just off underfloor heating. So yeah, it just goes to show what the water quality was like. Now, wiring center is done. Everything's been flushed and dumped out. New pump is on. Stats all on the wall. Hussein's been busy. He's been giving me a hand today. So he's put all the stats on the wall. I've now got to clean up the power flush machine, change all the flow meters, and then we need to power it up, set up each of the heat misers to each zone. And then I've got to do the hub as well somewhere. So they want the internet app control and everything as well. So I still got that too. So we're getting there. The time is, what's the time? Come and watch. Um, just gone 20 past three. So it's okay. It's okay time-wise. Main thing is going to be, the true test is going to be once we fire it up and make sure everything's working. Oh, we're done. All new flow meters, you can see they're all open. Everything's running. All the stats are paired up. So we've got seven zones and everything is set and working. We've only just turned it on. So I'll show you on my, uh, unfortunately my friends borrowed my Testo thermal imaging cameras but I'll try and show you on there so there you can see the heat coming off the underfloor heating manifold you can start to see some of the loops there we go that's in the 
lounge area. Kitchen area is starting to get warm. So obviously that's starting to come through slowly. I think that's the last one that we put on. We've got hallway. That's all getting nice and hot. Study. That's getting nice and hot. Dining room. You can see it there as well. So yeah, it's been successful. Everything's getting nice and hot. Change the pump, set up a new heat miser system. The only thing that I've not been able to do today is set up the heat miser hub so that they can use the app because where I wanted to plug it in, there isn't a spare socket. So that's pretty straightforward to do anyway. So I'm sure they'll be able to get around, get around that once this will. Main thing is the heat miser stats and everything are all up and running. So we're just going to pop the boards and everything back that we removed and then wrap up and call it a day. Hope you found that one useful. It's a bit of a slog, but we managed to get it done in the end. Right, let's go in. So this is the job where I fitted the, this my first underfloor heating job. Oh, this looks beautiful. Kitchen looks well nice. This is much different <laughs> to when we did the underfloor heating here. So yeah, Josh is just gonna have a little look inside. But this is where, so this is where the boiler is. So that's all done there. And we need to have a look at this water mains leak, which is back in that corner. So let's see what we can do. Oh, you're done the yeah, <sighs> right, it's still concrete. so. That's where the manifold is and all the controls and everything. So they've left this axis here. Oh, and that is where it's leaking. So I don't know if you can hear it, probably even see it, but yeah, it's basically try and get this there. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but that is leaking down there. So the customer has said to us, we can cut this section out here so we've got a bit more space, but yeah, I don't know how we're gonna to get to that, but we'll figure it out. Oh, this is not gonna be fun. Okay, so after a lot of swearing we've managed to get the old fitting off cut out a lot of the insulation and the old so we've taken that's the top end that we've taken off from there and that's the old fitting now there's nothing obvious on there now we can see that it would have failed All right, we need to get this off of here which well we can do with that afterwards first thing we want to get this new fitting on first let's give it a call that's a good sign right <laughs> we've got the old fitting off and we managed to get a new fitting on there don't ask how, but Josh and V made a little trip down as well. They worked their magic. And three-man team, we managed to get it all done. It's not leaking anymore. And I think I figured out why the last one was leaking. So me and Josh didn't actually do this connection. The customer had their friend who's the builder who's here. Let me just set this tripod up here. So when I took, so that was in there like that. I got this bit out. Now, this white collar, when I got it out the fitting, that was facing that way. Now, when I had to look at the other side on here, the teeth are meant to be facing into the fitting like that. But that was in there that way. So obviously that's why that's allowed because it makes sense now because as it goes in that's meant to tighten but it allows it to push in that way so it's probably 
slipped out a bit and that's what's caused it to leak. So in theory, we may have gotten away with putting that in that way and then tightening it up. But after all that hassle, I didn't want to risk reusing this. So this is going to go in the bin. New one is on. It's not leaking. Done. Big man like Josh. I want to go. I don't want to do no more work today either, but still got jobs to do. But at least this big one's done.